we have clearly been raised with a misunderstanding of what makes us happy you know mm -hmm. and that's not necessarily to blame for just our, our parents but like movies society school friend groups we have completely if there's a formula for happiness we have completely gotten lost in terms of what the variables are mm -hmm. you know what i mean and yeah i think it's a fascinating question it's like what actually makes you happy yeah i don't i it's fascinating it's just fascinating and then i we've talked about this in my own life I continue to pursue things that I have evidence don't make me happy. You know, mm -hmm. we've talked about, oh, let's grow the business. Like, why? Like, the last 30% didn't matter. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, like, why would I want that? Oh, let's get the podcast larger. Why? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Taking the channel. So from, that someone can make a mean video so about it. So yeah, it's just, it's, it's fascinating. I fall into the trap. We all do. And I'm just, it was a mental note to when you see someone that is suffering and they happen to be stunningly beautiful or have something that you aspire to yeah. for me to update my thing and go, oh wow being stunningly beautiful is doesn't inoculate you against that mm -hmm. and might not even help at all and might even take you away yeah i'm not convinced. like let's <laughs> say you have a kid i'm not convinced the best thing for that kid is to be as attractive as possible yes i think there's probably like a bell curve you want them to be a little bit better looking than average. <laughs> Probably, you know what I mean? Maybe, yeah. Like you're looking for like, all right, you, can't, you blend in, but like not bad. <laughs> yes, I, and people don't their, hand you everything on a silver happiness. platter. Yeah. Well, no. also, yeah, let's say you're beautiful, so you get everything comes easy to you, but you don't have to develop certain skills or mm -hmm. certain uh, toughness or mental toughness or ability to create joy internally. And now all of a sudden, the only way you know how to get happiness is external validation. Okay, then you move to a city like LA. Now you're surrounded by people who all had that same upbringing in their small town and you have to compete for external validation instead of yeah, just yeah. being someone who found a different way to be happy besides the approval of others in terms of your appearance. Sure. I'm not I'm not certain that the better looking the better. In LA at the upper extremes, I'm sure that it gets in the way. Now, I'm not saying that that one would wish to be born less than average attractiveness, but what you see at the top levels is it becomes all consuming. Yeah. It is a, it a, is your diet, your lifestyle, your social circle, your this, and it puts you around people with that same belief. So you can't even break out of that vain circle that yeah. that this is all that matters. I, I would bet ideal is like one standard deviation above <laughs> the mean. You know what I mean? Like it's like you're just clearly on the right of the bell curve, but you're not so far that it de defined who you are. Yeah. That would be my guess. We we spoke you and I yesterday to a lawyer and one of the we were talking about, OK, because when we made this business, it was like, OK, half of this non-existent entity is yours. Yeah, yeah, half is of this non-existent entity nothing, is mine. So. And so we were going through all of the what happens if one of us dies? What happens mm -hmm. if this? And one of the questions is, if one of us dies, should your family get it? Like, how much do you want to guarantee to your family? Mm. And we were, I was like, and you were like, none. <laughs> like, yeah. Not the one, I don't have a family, but also I will have some life insurance if, if I get a family. Yeah, that was my whole thing. It was like, if I want to take care of my family, I will get life insurance. Yeah. I don't need them owning half of and getting to decide half of what mm -hmm. happens with a business I created 20 years ago. Sure. Like now you... And my wife or my children are negotiating what Charisma on Command should do. Why, how could it possibly, this is my view, how could it be good, say I have a son, to live in the shadow of, let's say that my I amass father. a fortune, of a dead father <laughs> with a fortune that I, I don't have yet, but like, let's say that I did and it was substantial, that he never had to do anything mm -hmm. uh, and just had this money and depression and means now to go buy a bunch of expensive drugs and no drive to do anything. Because we all look at our own lives and we look at the difficult parts and go, man, that really shaped who I was, but I wouldn't wish that on anyone else. Mm. And it's like, why? <laughs> if, that was, if that was a culminating, tr trying it difficult experience, why wouldn't you want that for someone else? I look back and I thank God in a weird way that I had so much student loan debt mm. because I look at the period of my life when I was accumulating that debt and when I was living like I was rich and I did nothing, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I was I was drinking five nights a week, hanging out, goofing off. And it was only when I was like, oh, my gosh, I owe one hundred thousand dollars and have to work a terrible job that I'm yeah. not terrible. One that I don't like in order to pay it back. That was when I started behaving in such a way that even better things could happen than yeah. drinking five nights a week. Well, and also, I think, one, you don't want to live for good stories. And two, this isn't true of everyone. But like some of the best memories we have is are you like are living in a closet in a yeah. four bedroom apartment in Brazil that we turned into a six bedroom and then Airbnb in the closet, sleeping on the couch because sure. you needed the money. But having having the time of our lives and also it's a great to, to like have come through it on the other side. It's a great thing to look back on and be like, all right, well, then that clearly that's not 
a death sentence. You know what I mean? To be negative 90,000 net worth with no income Mm -hmm. was like a peak experience in your life, which probably helps with your fear of poverty relative to somebody who has never had it and therefore thinks it's a death sentence and therefore can't quit their job to start a business. And I want to be clear, like I was never impoverished. The nice thing, and I think that you want, there's a Goldilocks zone that Mm -hmm that culture teaches you to aim far above. But the Goldilocks zone for me was, I knew beyond a shadow of a doubt, I would not starve to death and I wouldn't have to sleep outside. Mm-hmm. Um, I also knew that my actions would not cause anyone I loved to starve to starve or have yep. to sleep outside. That said, I, yeah, renting out my bed, sleeping on wooden floors with blankets or, you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. Like it wasn't wasn't Dude, torture. I, had, I, I was, was inside and climate controlled. I had a controlled. bedroom with, with five other friends mm-hmm. and then you moved in and slept on a cot on, my, on the floor next yeah, yeah. to my bed. Like, and this, it, it's, uh, no, and, and t- t- extreme poverty is bad. I'm not saying, I'm not, poverty to, is bad. That's I'm not, not trying poverty. To, I'm what not I, trying to yeah. diminish people's experience. Like, yeah, if yeah. you don't know where your meal is coming from, if you feel unsafe, mm-hmm. that's all bad. And I think even everything I've studied with happiness would say there is a level that you need in terms of certainty of safety, shelter, food, water, mm-hmm. right? So I'm not saying that if you don't have access to those things, buck up, kid. Yeah. Um, but yeah, you were just sleeping on the floor on a cot and, we're like unclear if your rent being four hundred dollars for my roommates who didn't like you being there was gonna impact your life or not. Mm-hmm. But it was great. It was fine. Whatever. We figured it out. Like yeah. I think that. So once you get above that safety level of wealth, um, yeah, some of the best memories and also like most growth comes from the desire to get out of the mm-hmm. lower level of of I can't afford anything and into creating something. Sure. You know I, what I, mean? I suspect that's one of the hardest parts of being a parent is allowing, because this last generation, everybody talks, didn't get that. Had the helicopter parent that insisted they got mm-hmm. the trophy for fifth place, you know, that that intervened on their behalf when they were being bullied at school. The the desire to jump in and make it smooth sailing for your kid, I can imagine is just overwhelming. Yeah, yeah. And- Well, I had smooth sailing, but somewhere, somewhere in my brain was just burrowed a seed of like, if you are a do nothing, you have to hate yourself. Well, you not, know what I mean? I mean you got beat up on occasion, right? Like it wasn't. Yeah, yeah. I, I guess I get confused on what it's it gone. Is it's to be. gone even more now. We were in the history of the world. We're the some of the most coddled people ever, right? You and I. Yes. But there's been even more since yeah, I our I generation. I, got, I probably got beat up like six times in school from no broken bones. Third grade, to, yeah. uh, You know, junior year in high school and there were no so broken six, bones six fights mm-hmm. of which i maybe won one <laughs> but mm-hmm. it wasn't wasn't looking good maybe that's why i got an mma yeah um, wanted to win <laughs> yeah yeah it <laughs> sucks man um so yeah i guess I, I wasn't like uh i'm not a trust fund baby there's such a big spectrum from like growing yeah. up in the hood in danger i'm as far from that as you can get mm-hmm. but then i guess there's like the billionaire parent where you never I'm speaking to the to people who, like us, are talking to lawyers to ensure continuity of the legacy, which is, in my opinion, you've gone too far. Mm. When you have generated generational wealth, and you could see this, it doesn't it doesn't help people. Yeah. Like they they live in these shadows of of what of what the people who came before them did with this implicit assumption that they'll never break out, they'll always be there. And then they often, because of that, have to go hard the other way and just do underperform you know nothing find a way to not give back and that's not true of everybody but i'm it was just such an interesting conversation when the lawyer was talking to us being like you guys are crazy you're gonna have a family one day i was like i get it i know and i really just want to make sure that they have enough for a solid food shelter public education and not millions of dollars should i be gone and even if i'm there then that's a question let's say that you're earning like lots of money. I'm not saying I'm going to be earning millions of dollars, but let's say that you do. Do you fly your kids first class on vacation to the Bahamas? Like, I I don't even know how one makes those decisions. Mm. Uh, maybe, you know, I haven't thought about really having a kid, but yeah, I don't know. What do you do? Do you take them to all the nice restaurants all the time and show them the greatest things before they're 10 years old and have that just be an expectation of what the world is? I have no idea. I don't know if you have any thoughts on that. I have put zero thought into how to raise a kid. <laughs> okay. like, like, we can move along. That, of all the books I've ever read about yeah. fitness and wealth creation and happiness, uh, child rearing has never cracked the list. Yeah, yeah. I've, I've truly no idea. 
Hope that you guys enjoyed that clip. If you want to see more like this and have us do more podcasts, we are 100% funded by our generous patrons. And if you'd like to contribute, there's a link in the description and we'll have one pop up on the screen right here so that we can do more podcasts where we have fun conversations and hopefully some deep ones like this. Either way, hope that you enjoyed the video and I will see you in the next one.